Firstly, I would like to welcome as our uh, celebrant this evening, Brian Senior, our, or I should say the Reverend Canon Brian Senior. Uh, you won't like me saying that. Um, who is the rector of South Gillingham and is in charge of four churches in Wigmore, Hempstead, Parkwood and Breadhurst. Uh, he does have some assistance in that. And um, for those of you who are old enough to remember, Brian was a member of this congregation and indeed our first youth pastor. And I can remember when we had 25 or 26 home groups he was our cluster leader, um, and we used to have monthly meetings to discuss affairs of state of what happened in home groups. So, very warm welcome, Brian. He's, for me, he's a blast from the past, but to you, he may be uh, somebody new. Thank you, Brian, for coming to share with us this evening. Um, as always, we have gluten-free uh, wafers. If you want a gluten-free wafer, could you indicate uh, with your hand so we are... Uh, no one. Okay. We're all okay with glu gluten then. Right. Um, and the other small thing was this is Ash Wednesday. And um, some people may feel a bit uncomfortable having a holy black smudge on their forehead. Um, if you do, um, or you can just step back when we do the ashing. Brian, uh, please come forward and, as you would for communion, and Brian will put a, a cross in ash on your forehead as a sign of our repentance, as a sign that ash reminds me that uh, as us as that we come from dust and will return to dust and ashes and to follow Jesus more closely than we are doing. We're all on a pilgrimage and wherever we are to do it a bit more. So thank you. After all that, just have a moment of quiet while we uh, recollect the presence of almighty God among us. Psalm 51 and verse 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Everyone needs compassion for one another from God. We're going to sing about that now. Would you like to stand?
give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Please sit. In my welcome, I forgot to include Brian's wife, Karen, in my welcome. No, she's not a vicar in disguise sussing us out uh, for a possible appointment, no. She's actually my boss, so I will be going to the cathedral sometime shortly and confess before her my omission, grievous sin. So sorry, Karen. <laughs> right, let's get back to more holy things. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditation on God's holy word. Together, holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Just a moment of silence. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole 
in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in some worship. Please stand. for the reading. The reading this evening is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was of old nor ever will be in ages to come. Before them, fire devours. Behind them, a fl flame blazes. Before them, the land is like the Garden of Eden. Behind them, a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. They have the appearance of horses. They gallop along like cavalry. With a noise like that of chariots, they leap over the mountain tops, like a crackling fire consuming a stubble, like a mighty army drawn up for battle. At the sight of them, nations are in anguish. Every face turns pale. They charge like warriors. They scale walls like soldiers. They all march in line not swerving from their course. They do not jostle each other, each marches straight ahead. They plunge through defences without breaking ranks. They rush upon the city, they run along the wall, they climb into the houses like thieves, they enter through the windows. Before them, the earth shakes, the sky trembles, the sun and moon are darkened and the stars no longer shine. 
The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number. And mighty are those who obey his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, net with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a hate sacred assembly. Gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temp temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. We're going to sing again. If you'd like to stand. <coughs> We've done and left undone For the ways we've wandered from your heart Forgive us, we pray Forgive us, we pray For the idols we put on above your
Please be seated. We're just going to make a little more of the gospel with some introductory responses. By faith, they may come up. If not, I'll just plow on. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. And oh, that you today would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. <laughs> Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. <laughs> Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who, is, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray as we consider some things from God's Word. Heavenly Father, grant that not my voice be heard, but yours, and through your Holy Spirit speak to all of us as each of us have need. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, well, Lent is here again. For the next 40 days, we are supposed to enter into a time of reflection about our walk with Jesus while 
at the same time following him in the scriptures right up to his crucifixion. This should kindle our love for him as we reflect on the ultimate length he went to to make our salvation possible and secure. Notice I used the words supposed to enter and should kindle because Lent is a time we are called to draw aside from the busyness of life, laying aside non-essentials, but by and large, we don't. So let's have a clean up. The word Lent means spring, and in days gone by, or back in the day, as in modern parlance, when coal fires kept us warm during the winter months, they also polluted the atmosphere and also created a lot of dirt and dust in the house, which built up over the winter months. As springtime approached, fires no longer needed to be lit, so there was an opportunity to embark upon the annual spring clean throughout the house, getting rid of the dirt, the dust, and the grime that had built up from coal-burning fires. We don't do spring cleaning as such very much now, but you may remember doing it yourself or experienced it at home when a child. The parallel between physical cleaning and spiritual cleaning is easily drawn. The church encourages us encourages us to have an annual spiritual spring clean. Trying to evaluate our walk with Jesus, identifying and highlighting areas of our lives which need his attention, all of which contributes to us growing to be more like Jesus. So it's a bit of rearranging of the furniture in our lives. However, the frenetic lifestyles many of us lead do not allow for that. So if we are serious about it, we need to intentionally arrange and plan our lives to create opportunities to do it. So it is, as in Joel's day, that the church blows the trumpet, declaring a holy fast calling a, secret, a sacred assembly, Joel chapter 2 and verse 15, like we are now to reconnect to Jesus. It isn't just the Roman Catholic and Anglican churches which do this. In the past 50 years or so, free churches have seen the value of having this time of spiritual spring cleaning and encouraging their members to do it as well. Even churches which once upon a time would never come under the yoke of observing seasons of the church's year now openly arrange Lent courses and change their focus during this time. Giving up, giving, giving back. How do we make the most of this time to grow spiritually? Traditionally, we have often spoken of giving up things for Lent. Things like alcohol, which I know most of you, is not a sacrifice. You don't ever have it. You're all teetotal, aren't you? Sorry. But if you do, giving up alcohol. Chocolate or some gastronomic indulgence of one kind or another. Others may give up or at least significantly cut down on watching television. Smoking, if you do. Time on the internet that could be classed as unnecessary. Entertainment or anything that has the whiff of a bit of frivolity about it. Suppressing enjoyment was the main message that came across. With such a negative press, 
it is little wonder that Lent is not embraced with enthusiasm and delight and an opportunity to increase our treasure in heaven. But if it is acknowledged at all, we casually observe it almost as a spectator going through the rituals so that by the time Easter comes, it will have made very little difference to us. You might be relieved to know that the Sundays of Lent do not count as part of Lent discipline because Sundays are celebrations of the resurrection. And we don't do gloom when celebrating the resurrection. However, suppressing our natural wants and pleasures by contrast makes Easter all the more liberating and joyful. So having reclaimed all this time we spend on frivolities, how do we use the new found time for our spiritual benefit? You've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. So ran an, ran an old song, and so it is with Lent. Many in the church pushed for a positive observance of Lent. So instead of giving up things, why not do things we don't, don't do normally? Perhaps read the Bible more diligently rather than when you remember to do it or feel like it. Those of you who are more Anglican-minded might be tempted to pray through morning or evening prayer, or both during Lent, or pray Compline or night prayer just before going to bed. Others may like to sign up for some kind of Lent course that many churches run. Some might like to be more proactive and offer help to those in need or make tools available for others to do jobs or use their car to give lifts which they may not normally do. Others may take up outdoor exercising using the time to pray and for the Spirit to show us those elements of our character which need honing. If, when cutting down, you save some money, why not put that money towards a charity and even add a bit more to it as well? Outward show or inner reform? As ever, there is the danger of observing the rituals for the sake of it, ticking off what is required and then returning to normal. But should we return to normal? Isn't the whole point to draw closer to Jesus and be changed, becoming more mature in our relationship with God? Joel exhorts us to rend our hearts and not our garments, in verse 13, meaning not to go through the external rituals of sorrow for sin alone, but be open to inner change, seeking the Spirit's power to become more like Jesus. In the Gospel reading, Jesus speaks about ostentation surrounding our spiritual observance. All who, by their external piety, want to impress others have their reward, as is mirrored in Jesus' recorded remarks about giving, praying, and fasting. Basically, it is between us and the Lord, not for show. Joel speaks to a Jewish nation that had drifted away from the law of God and was threatened with punishment, which God would do by means of the Assyrian army. Just like swarms of locusts that rampage and devastate everything, 
so would be the Assyrian army. It was a doom-laden prospect for the Jews and laced with expressions drawn from the giving of the law, the darkness which could be felt from earlier encounters with God's revelation. It was a dark time for God's people with threats and uncertainty around. In fact, not dissimilar to the time we are living in now. Returning to God equals hope. Yet amid the doom and gloom, there was hope. And that was in returning to God's ways and being faithful to him. The day of the Lord is approaching. It will come, but it is not fixed. The Lord is merciful, and when people turn from their sins and renew their relationship with him in obedience to his will, he will relent. As it says in verse 13 and 14. However, this repentance must be genuine and sincere. It must be wholehearted to the extent that nothing must get in the way of it and everyone is summoned to be involved. The elders, that is those with authority in the society, new mothers, children, and even newlyweds, their immediate concerns are to be laid aside for the more important business of coming before him in repentance and straightening out themselves up before him. What is said to them may equally apply to us. I am sure we all have that fleeting thought that we could all do better. As our school reports may have said, and could be better, but do not get beyond having a serious scrutiny of our lives, our habits, our attitudes, how we spend our money and our time, whether our self, others' balance is all right or needs adjusting. So search and rescue as we invite the Holy Spirit to search and examine us, it can be an uncomfortable time as he shows us elements of our lives we may need to work on, while at the same time the Holy Spirit lovingly exhorts us to better things rather than crush us with disillusionment. Ash Wednesday is when the church blows the trumpet draws aside to the focus of our Christian walk, which should be a priority for the next 40 days. Dare I say, all of us need adjusting, myself more than most. Whilst the church collectively, as the people of God, do much good in society, and their effectiveness for the kingdom is understated in the media, Yet there are in its ranks passengers who come along on a Sunday for the ride when they feel like it and have no conscious contact with the Lord in between. Some are more interested in church politics than bringing the good news to others, while others jealously guard a role they no longer have the gifting to perform. Yes, the church does a lot of good collectively, even if the recipients often stay at arm's length from the driving force that motivates Christians. But in the popular mind, the church is irrelevant, out of touch, hypocritical, wanting to ban anything that they don't like, a waste of space. In the words of Joel, in verse 17, when people see little of the one who lives in us radiating out from our lives, is it any wonder 
they dismiss us by commenting, as Joel did, where is their God? The church needs an MOT to make it function better so that others can see the difference the Spirit of God makes bringing glory to himself. Let us pray for ourselves and for all others in the church throughout the world that the life of the Spirit may be seen in our lives. Have a blessed Lent. Let's have a moment of quiet while we... ask God to just remind us of things that he may have spoken to us about. We now come to a time of self-examination and confession. But before we get into focusing on ourselves, let's focus on the nation and people of Ukraine. And I'm sure our heartfelt prayers are for that situation. We sang earlier, God can move the mountains, and that's going to be put to the test at this time. So the prayer that the archbishops of York and Canterbury wrote for our, us to pray. And so let's just try to identify with the fear, terror, of the people of Ukraine, and particularly our brothers and sisters there. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons we pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And I'm now going to ask uh, Vicky if she will lead us in this time of self-examination, extended confession, basically. Thank you, Vicky.
So it's, it's up on the screen, um, if you can join me with the words in bold. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord. for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may know and show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So we come to the time of the imposition of ashes, as, and as Graham said, for some people this is a really helpful bit of symbolism. Um, it isn't necessarily for everyone, and that's fine. So I'm going to invite you to come, if you want to come, 
please do. Um, but don't feel uncomfortable if that is uncomfortable for you. That's fine. So, dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we keep this uh, season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Ah. Uh.
The Lord enrich you with His grace and nourish you with His blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from all your offenses. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand to share the peace together in whatever appropriate manner you have established here. Um, <laughs> I'll leave that one to you. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to His grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer one another a sign of peace. Shall we sing, by grace alone. By grace alone, somehow I stand Where even angels fear to
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which He died to set us free. Defying death, He rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your Spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, sorry, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to His supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive You, but only say the word and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink His blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by His body, and our souls washed through His most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in Him, and He in us. Amen.
Almighty God, You have given Your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these inestimable gifts and also daily endeavor to follow the blessed steps of His most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son. He is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through Him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. Amen. And so the blessing. What's going on? It hasn't. We don't have some words. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in His body on the cross, heal you by His wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.